Everyone, we're just about to start and, and I'll invite you to stand for our uh, opening hymn. I think we will. Yep, we're ready to go. And it's number 242, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God. Rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to you, O Israel. O come, true wisdom from on high, and order all things far and nigh, to us the path of knowledge show. And teach us in her ways to go. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. O come, O come, great Lord of might, in ancient times on Sinai's height, you gave your chosen tribes the Lord in cloud and majesty and oh rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O of Jesse free your children from all tyranny from depths of hell your people save and give them victory o'er the grave rejoice rejoice Emmanuel shall come to Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and peace be with you. And welcome everyone, this first opportunity to really gather since we gathered up at the Cube um, back before lockdown. And it's really great that we can, in this way, gather to celebrate the end of the year. Many things have happened for so many people during this time. And we bring all of that into our Eucharist today. We used to refer to this as the agency mass, the end of year agency mass. I'm changing the language a little bit. It's our end of year pastoral works mass. Um, because all of us are about the pastoral work of the Diocese of Wollongong. And that whether it be in Catholic care, whether it be in the office of the bishop, the school's office, um, Catholic Development Fund, we are about the pastoral work of the gospel. So today, we bring all those works uh, in prayer to our God. And so as we gather today, let's do so calling to mind the mercy and love of God. And we acknowledge those times we may not have lived in that love. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. You are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh, the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. Hear in kindness, O Lord, the prayers of your people, 
that those who rejoice at the coming of your only begotten Son in our flesh may, when at last he comes in glory, gain the reward of eternal life. (coughs) Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Song of Songs. I hear my beloved. See how he comes, leaping on the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle, like a young stag. See where he stands behind our wall. He looks in at the window. He peers through the lattice. My beloved lifts up his voice. He says to me, come then, my love, my lovely one, come. For see, winter is past, the rains are over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, the season of glad songs has come, the cooing of the turtle dove is heard in our land, the fig tree is forming its first figs and the blossoming vines give out their fragrance. Come then, my love, my lovely one, come. My dove, hiding in the clefts of the rock, in the coverts of the cliff, show me your face. Let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet, and your face is beautiful. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Cry out with joy in the Lord, you holy ones. Sing a new song to him. Cry out, Cry out, out with Lord, joy in the Lord, you holy, holy ones. ones. Sing, Sing a new, a new song, song to him. Give thanks to the Lord upon the harp. For the ten-string lute, sing him songs. O oh, sing him a song that is new. Play loudly with all your skill. Cry, Cry out, out with joy Lord, in the Lord, holy you holy ones. Sing a new song to him. His own designs shall stand forever, the plans of his heart from age to age. They are happy, whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his own. Cry out with joy in the Lord, you holy ones. Sing a new song to him. Our Lord is waiting, our soul is waiting for the Lord. The Lord is our help and our shield. In him do our hearts find joy. We trust in his holy name. Cry out with joy in the Lord, you holy ones. Sing a new song to him. Please stand to greet the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Come, Emmanuel. God's presence among us, our King, our Judge. Save us, Lord our God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Mary set out and went as quickly as she could to a town in the hill country of Judah. She went into Zechariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. Now, as soon as Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She gave a loud cry and said, Of all women you are the most blessed, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why should I be honoured with a visit from the mother of my Lord? For the moment your greeting reached my ears, the child in my womb leapt for joy. Yes, blessed is she who believed that the promise made her by the Lord would be fulfilled. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
when we listen to the gospel today, we do so with the sense that this is only part of the story. This last, this octave before, East, before the celebration of Christmas tells us the story of the lead up to the birth of Jesus. And so we have to take it in a full context. So much of what we're going to hear in the next couple of days prepare us, prepares us for what we'll be doing on Saturday. So the first part of today, we listen to a response from Mary to the Annunciation. Now, we all think of this experience of Mary racing off to the hill country of Judea being a really lovely thing. Isn't it lovely she's going off to visit Elizabeth? Part of it would have been the fact for her own safety. Her mother and father would have got her out of town because of the fact that she could have been stoned to death as an adulteress because she was an unmarried mother against the law. So part of it would have been to get her away and in safety. The other part of it is the fact that Mary needed the proof of what the angel Gabriel was saying. Remember, Elizabeth in her old age has herself conceived a son. So Mary, in some way, goes to seek that proof of what God had promised. Now, Mary goes to the hill country of Judea. It's not an easy road, believe you me, to go from Nazareth uh, to where she is, to Ayan Kerim. It's a hill country, so it's dusty, dirty roads. She would never have gone alone. It was unheard of for a woman to travel by herself. So could you imagine what it would have been like when she arrives in the town? What's the rumour? Where's her husband? She's pregnant. Where's her husband? So the gossip mongers would have been out in force. But in all of that, Mary, declared, Mary is declared by Elizabeth as blessed. Blessed is she who believed that the promise made her by the Lord would be fulfilled. The words that come from Elizabeth's mouth. Powerful words that recognises the gift of God present. Now that's a long way round of saying how much do we appreciate the gift we are for one another and the gift that we are for the people who we minister to. Because the reality is for, for a lot, there's not a huge amount of comeback. But do we recognise that what we take with us whenever we minister to one another and to the people in our care, we take the gift of Jesus? Mary didn't go laden down to Elizabeth with trinkets for a modern day baby shower. She went with herself. And she gave the complete gift of herself to Elizabeth. Now, as we come together in the preparation for Christmas, how many of you have run around like mad chooks with your heads cut off? Oh, what am I going to get so-and-so for Christmas? What am I going to do this for so-and-so for Christmas? Have I got all the food I need for Christmas? And all that sort of stuff. We're recognising maybe the greatest gift this Christmas because of what we've been through over the last two years is the simple gift of us, ourselves. That's the challenge. We have to get away from the gift giving and recognise the gift of presence. Not the gift of material things. Look, the material things are wonderful. They're lovely. But sometimes you have to ask, is that what they really want? Is that what they really need? That's a real challenge. The gospel that we've listened to presents two women chatting, rejoicing and responding to the gift of their pregnancies. Pregnancies that are full of hope 
and full of promise. Pregnancies that are a belief in God's will. And this is the essence that we've had in the readings today. The first reading we listen to from the Song of Songs is often used at weddings. And here it is, we have God seeking us out as a lover, recognising the beauty of the love that he has, recognising the beauty of the love that is there for us. It's a love that we are called to respond to. So how do I understand God's will? And how do we respond to the gift of God? Through the interaction of Elizabeth and Mary, we have evidence that something new is on its way. Something new and the change is real and it will be enormous. Whilst we don't hear the words of the Magnificat today, we will tomorrow, the words Mary proclaims the changes that will come with the birth of her son, scattering the proud, bringing down the powerful from their thrones, raising the lowly, filling the hungry with good things and sending the rich away poor, it's revolutionary. <coughs> with the birth of Jesus, it symbolises that everything will be turned on its head. Everything will be changed. And so... Amid the hustle and bustle of this time, how often do we really consider a gift? A gift will have many purposes, but at its purest level, it's something that is freely given and in some ways is very sacramental. Because being sacramental, it symbolises something in the same way that the bread and the wine we will consecrate upon this altar, as it becomes for us the body and blood of Jesus. So too, the gift that we give to someone is sacramental because it symbolises something of who we are and the person we're giving it to. So when we sacramentalise the bread and wine and it becomes the body and blood of Christ and we receive it, what do we become? The body of Christ. Gift to the world. A gift freely given. A gift that we have the ability to respond to or reject. But as we come so powerfully close to the event of, birth, of the birth of Jesus, are we really prepared to recognise our place as the body of Christ in our world. The story of the visitation that we've listened to, one can only imagine, as I said at the beginning, what the rumour mongers would have been like. Well, let the rumours begin around us, for who we are and what people may say about us. Because when we reveal ourselves as the body of Christ, then the rumours are true. It's not gossip, but rather it's fact. And every ministry that you and I are part of, every pastoral work that we participate in, what are we about? But revealing the face of God and revealing ourselves as the body of Christ. Free gift to the world to be responded to. So I say to you today, thank you for the work that you have done in such an incredibly difficult period of time. For a lot of people, it might seem as though I only work in an office. Can I dispel that? You don't only work in an office. You work as part of a team, as part of the church of Wollongong, which is part of a bigger picture altogether. And part of that is to believe in the promise that God has made to us. When we sit down as an executive 
and we listen to what's going on, I can't help but feel an immense sense of absolute pride. And that might sound a bit wacko. But the reality is I feel an absolute pride for the work that's done in the name of the church by all of you. Because you become the tangible experience of the body of Christ in this place. And what more could any leader of a community ask for? That the we can be tangible signs of the love of our God, revealed at Christmas in the vulnerability of a child, a child who radically changed the course of history, who called people to an accountability and into a relationship that is deep and beautiful with the God who loves us, the God of the Song of Songs, who seeks us out, who finds us, and declares us beautiful. So today, let's celebrate our beauty in the love of God. you to join us in our offertory hymn, number 525, Jesus come to us. Jesus, come to us, lead us to your life. Jesus, be with us, for we need you. Lord, we come before you, listen to our prayer, fill us all with hope and joy. to praise you for your faithfulness through night. You will be with us this we know. Jesus, come to us, lead us to your sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. And lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. But it is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph as spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis Xavier and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis our Pope, and Brian, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, 
O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, for whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let's greet each other with peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For Holy Communion, could I simply invite you to come via the side aisles and return via the centre aisle.
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of death. Amen. Gentle woman, quiet light. Morning star, so strong and bright, gentle mother, peaceful dove, teach us wisdom, teach us love. chosen by the Father you were chosen for the Son you were chosen from a For women, shining one, gentle woman, gentle woman. quiet light, morning star, morning star, so strong. Gentle mother, gentle mother, peaceful love, teach us wisdom, teach us love. Blessed are you among
So just before our final prayer and blessing, can I just say thank you to everyone? Um, again, thank you for all you've done over the last few years. We didn't get a chance to do this last year, um, not with everyone here. Um, I think we had a couple of representatives and that was about it. Um, thanks to Jude and to Bede for their music today. Um, it's lovely to have um, the gifts of our community, of our, our work sharing together to provide music and worship for us. So thanks guys, I really appreciate it. Um, but most of all, today's an opportunity also to recognise that we do have, and I know individual groups have recognised those who are leaving uh, our, our work and our ministries and moving on to other things. There's a particular person I'd like to say thank you to today, and that's Carolyn. <laughs> um, Carolyn's, um, I'll just say, thrown in the towel and going elsewhere. Um, she's not retiring. She's definitely not retiring. She's moving on um, and has um, moved into a new area of, of life for herself. And I think that's amazing. And I really congratulate you on your decision, Carolyn, to continue to serve the church in the way you're going to serve. I think it's a real gift that you have for us. And we, as the Diocese of Wollongong, have benefited so much from your professionalism, your knowledge, uh, also your gentleness, and the way you've been able to organise things for so many. Um, so, Karen, I'd like to say personally, um, as the Bishop of the Diocese, thank you. But from the diocese itself, we are so very grateful for the gift you have been for us. Uh, and will continue to be because we know uh, we'll get you back. And, that, and now I'm going to really, really embarrass her. Can you come out the front? Because we're going to give her a blessing. And could I get you to turn and face everybody? And could I invite you to impose your hands as we simply pray, as you pray with me as I give the blessing. And I use the blessing that I gave the night of my ordination. We do not wish you joy without a sorrow, nor endless days without the healing dark nor brilliant sunshine without restful shadows, nor tides that never turn against your bark. We wish you love and strength and faith and wisdom, goods gold enough to help some needy one. We wish you songs, but also blessed silence and God's sweet peace when every day is done. Blessings to you, Carolyn, and thank you. We're not supposed to do this, but... <laughs> that was lovely. Lovely. Congratulations. Thank you. And so can I invite you to stand for our final prayer. Lord, may participation in this divine mystery provide enduring protection for your people so that being subject to your glorious majesty in dedicated service, they may know abundant health in mind and body through Christ our Lord. Amen. You're all invited over to the Xavier Suite just over here, the Xavier Centre, for a cup of coffee and some refreshments. So please come over and just spend a little bit of time with one another before you head back to what you have to do today. And so the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Have a great Christmas, everyone. I invite you to join in our, our final hymn. I think you'll know it's Silent Night, but it's number 270 in your green book if, you, if you'd like to check it out. Jim.
Jesus, Lord. 